mentioned, you have successfully got this far and this interview is there to show the supervisor that you are dedicated, you are committed, you can work as a team, I cannot emphasise this enough, people that don't work as a team don't do well as in PhDs, I've seen it. I've seen people enter the lab and just crumble when they try to be independent, you know? It doesn't work like that, it doesn't work like that in a PhD. You have to be collaborative, you have to work together, you have to speak to other people, you don't have to be friends, you don't have to go out, but you do have to be professional and work with other people, especially in a lab environment where you're sharing fridges, you're sharing equipment, you're sharing uh, protocols, you're sharing methods and everything. And you're sharing reagents as well, so you do have to work together and find a way to um, be a people's person even if you're not. So question number one is tell us a little bit about yourself. Now I hate this question, <laughs> the passion. I feel like I, I just don't know how to answer this question very well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put down an ideal answer for this question over here. But essentially what you want to do is show your personality whilst also kind of linking that to your academic side. So you might want to say something about your background, you know, I'm from London, I grew up in London, I studied at a London university and I've been really passionate about understanding cancer and knowing how it developed and during my undergraduate I really fell in love with the topic of cell biology and I came across this project and I really want to find out more about the two proteins that interact during cancer. You're kind of linking in yourself and also your interests whilst making it relevant to that particular topic. You might also say that I love, you could also say something about I love to travel, I've travelled to 15 countries in the world and kind of throw in a bit of your own personality as well. There's no harm in doing that at all. The second question you might be asked is why you want to do a PhD. This is such a fundamental question but you do need to say something about the fact that you enjoy this topic and you feel like you want to learn more about it and you feel like you want to study it in more depth. I said that one part of my undergraduate that I really enjoyed was a six month research placement where I had to do a project, an extended project in a lab, I think it was six weeks actually. That was the part of my undergraduate that I enjoyed the most. I enjoyed being in a laboratory, working with other people, working towards a particular goal um, and that was a bit that I enjoyed the most and that's why I want to pursue a PhD. I want to extend this and do this in more depth uh, for the next three years and you want to show that you're committed, you want to show why they should fund you. The worst thing for them would be to fund you and then you drop out after a year. So they really do want to know that you are there for the long run and you understand what it's like to be in a PhD and you understand the commitment that it takes to, to, to do a PhD essentially. So the next question you might be asked is what you want to do after your PhD. I was asked this question, my supervisor said to me, what are your plans post PhD? And I said to him that I really want to become a lecturer, I want to teach. Um, and that was why I want to do a PhD because I want to understand my topic in even more depth and understand it to a better level and give myself kind of a wider scope of understanding. So um, that was the reason why I said, but you know, if you want to do a postdoc, say that because you want to you know obviously follow that career path if you want to become if you want to leave academia and let's say you want to become a consultant that's also fine that obviously looks better if you say that you want to stay in the lab afterwards but it's also okay to say I don't know like if you say I don't really know what I want to do in the future but I definitely know that this PhD will help me identify what I enjoy and the things that I want to learn more about then I think that will be that's also a great way of of wording it you could easily say that you want to become an academic you know that you love academia but you also are keeping your options open you, you don't know what it exactly is that you want to do and that is completely fine the one thing that your supervisor potential supervisor is looking for is that you have thought about where this PhD will take you because like I said it is such a long commitment it's a four-year three to four year program and they want to make sure that you don't just want to do a PhD for the name or for anything else and then once you started it uh, you hate it and you quit after a year, year and a half, which is their worst. The next question I was asked is what my strengths and what my weaknesses are. And again, this is another question that I loathe. I find that trying to self-assess my character and who I am is very difficult for myself. But you do have to think of a good answer for this. I'll tell you what the worst answer. The worst answer is to say that my weakness is that I don't have a weakness and I'm a perfectionist. Like, that is just such a worn out answer. Do not say that. A good answer would be to give yourself a practical example. So for example, say that my strength is um, organisation and I've shown that this is one of my strengths during my undergraduate where I spent six weeks in the holidays 
doing this project and the skill that I acquired from it is this, that and that and kind of giving examples of things and relating it to a PhD. You could even say that I know that a PhD requires commitment. I've shown commitment through my part-time job every Saturday for the past three years I've been working in retail or whatever and that shows commitment and even though it's been difficult at times I've always stuck to it because it's something that I you know I really enjoy and that's something that I want to you know take into my PhD. Be honest about your weaknesses, but apply it in a way where you're showing that you want to grow. I feel like one of my weaknesses are um, being organised, and that's something that I want to improve on um, during my PhD. And I want to try to develop this by attending some classes in this doctoral school, uh, and you know I, that I hope that this PhD can help me with uh, making this weakness into a strength. So you know you've kind of taken something that you think is quite negative, but you've made it into a positive thing. Your supervisor is not trying to catch you out and find a perfect person because no one is perfect. So if you are able to identify a weakness and say that out loud to, to, to him or her, it does show that you are self-aware and that you have the intention uh, and the aims to improve during the PhD. The next question you might be asked is if you have any training needs that you can identify straight away. So this is specifically if you applied for a specific PhD like my one and I knew that I needed to do some microscopy. So I would say something like uh, I know that this project involves lots of microscopy and I haven't done too much work in microscopy so far so I definitely would want to improve on that. When you actually enter the PhD they will teach you everything you need to know whether you ask for it or not. You will have to learn it. So it's more for you to identify and try to pick out a few things. So maybe have a little think about what things you might want to say um, when you are asked that question. The next question might be asked is why you've chosen that particular PhD project. So again, like I mentioned, if you are applying for a particular PhD where you're applying to one specific lab, you might be asked why you're applying to that program or that lab. And again, this comes down to you doing your research and finding out what that lab has to offer. What does that group have that other groups might not have? You can kind of take this in two ways. You can one, discuss what that lab has published. So say, you know, I've read lots of papers that you've published recently. You can mention that you are interested in the topic that that supervisor is advertising and you've read some of their papers and you feel like it really aligns with what you're interested in. On the other hand, if you know what methods and equipment that lab has, you can also talk about that and say that I know that you have the world's best microscope, I know that you have experts in this method and that's why I want to join this PhD because I feel like I'll gain the most in terms of my research experience and that again looks really good too. The next question that you might be asked is why you are the right candidate. So you probably should have written this in your uh, cover letter. I'll leave a link down below to my previous video where I talk about how to write a research proposal. Essentially you want to sell yourself. So talk about what research and experience that you've done. What can you bring to the table to that lab? If you know some statistical techniques, if you've done some coding, if you use a particular software, if you know how to use a particular machine, um, mention that and say, look, I know how to use this, I learned this for this much time, so I can bring that expertise to this lab. So you need to show lots of passion and lots of excitement for that particular research project. Show them that you are super excited to join that lab and explain what it is that that lab can gain from you. Discuss any grades that you've achieved that are really high and significant. So if you achieved an award for being the top being a top 5% for a particular class in, in a university, then mention that, that's great, show that you're passionate, show that you're able to learn and that you have the determination to go far. The next question that you may be asked is if you have any expected difficulties that uh, may arise. So you don't have to say something like if you don't think there'll be any difficulties then you just say I, I, you know, I haven't thought of any of that potentially may occur. If you've done lots of research on what it is that you're applying to, then you might notice that your research requires you to travel to a certain place. Your research might need you to dig into some archives, so you might need to you might say something like, I need to request permission to, to acquire that, so that might be an issue. Or maybe your English isn't that great, so you might want to say something like, I might need to do some English training. There is no problem with that at all. They like your academic background, they like who you are, which is why you are sat there in that chair speaking to them. So any difficulties that you may raise will not be an issue considering everything else is okay. They know that you're worth being there, which is why you are there. 
The next question they might be asked is what would you like the impact of this project to be? So this wasn't a question I was asked, but it could be one that you might be asked. And again, you're not expected to say an amazing answer, concise answer, because even the supervisor doesn't know what the impact is. But if you know that you're working on a clinical trial, or you know you're working on developing a particular machine or a method, then you can mention that. I'm you can say something like, I'm hoping to patent this method, I am hoping to increase knowledge in this field, I'm hoping to uh, develop this drug, I'm hoping that this will help increase knowledge in so and so and so. Especially now in research, I think more and more funding bodies want to make sure that research is done uh, to have an impact in the world and not just for the sake of it. Uh, there has to be some sort of a societal gain for people to do PhDs. So if you're able to say something along the lines of this will help in the public sector, in the private sector, in healthcare, in medicine, whatever it is, then I think that looks really good and it shows that you've thought about what you're doing and what your research is doing for the world. If you have a blog or a YouTube channel, for example, or any sort of public facing uh, interface, then this would be a great place to mention it. I'm hoping to document my journey and show people what it's like to be in research. I think that's totally okay to say in this day and age. Not sure if I would say that, but you know, if you are passionate and you know you want your supervisor to know that that is something that you want to get into and that's something that you are passionate about, photography or whatever it is, then I definitely would mention it. Again, it shows that you have a character and it makes you more of a likeable person, I think. I think I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and the last question that you might be asked is, why did you choose this university or this institute to do your PhD in? And I think this is a very, very, very key question because although the experience of your PhD is for the most part determined by your lab and your supervisor and your group, the university does have a big impact because they do set the rules for how you progress onto your second year and your third year and there are certain requirements that different universities have. So for UCL, for example, we have a doctoral school and every year we need to do a certain number of courses to be able to graduate at the end so these courses are kind of kind of extracurricular in the sense where it's nothing to do with your PhD but it might be a career event it might be how to write a thesis how to write a poster how to find a job business finance my friend did a finance coding thing um, and you can literally do whatever you want but they do have courses that you kind of have to go to or if you know of any other societies that you want to join you can mention that or if you know that UCL have a particular equipment or a particular department that you would love to be more um, in touch with uh, or love to collaborate with, you can mention them as well. Even if it's just location, uh, let's say you're not a Londoner and you want to live in London, you can say London's an amazing city, hustle and bustle, everyone is here. Uh, and you can mention something like that, like I would love to live in London and that's why I've chosen a London university because I know for sure you either love London or you hate London. There is no in-between, no in-between. Every single person I've spoken to that has come to London from uh, outside of London either hates it or loves it. Literally, there's no in-between. <laughs> I have seen people that have come from France. So my lab was mostly French, Italian and Spanish. Uh, I saw people come from France who hated the UK, absolutely hated London. Um, I saw people that came from Spain, Italy who loved it, uh, other people that came from other countries and hated the weather. That can have a huge impact on the way that you experience your PhD and your education in London. And when you're asked why this university, you can definitely use the city or the town to talk about what it is about that university that you like and why that city attracts you as well. So that's the end of this video. I really hope this helped you with preparing for your PhD interview and also helping you with the kind of questions that you might be asked during your PhD interview. I will also have a part two to this video where I talk about what questions that you should ask your supervisor when he or she asks you what do you want to know. Um, I think that's this is very very important. I'll talk about it more in the next video but it really can make or break your experience depending on what kind of questions you ask. So if you want to see that then don't forget to press subscribe and also the bell button to see more from me. Don't forget to follow me on my socials, which I'll put up here. And if you have any questions regarding application, if you want to book a consultation with me uh, on Skype, one-to-one uh, -one session, then let me know. Send me an email on the email down below. I'm in a place at gmail.com. Uh, otherwise, I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.